What's up everyone, this is Yush Tree, Mr. Steven, aka The Legend, and my pronouns are he, him, and his, and welcome to a very special edition on The Steven Factor. Folks, it is Oscar night, and for the first time ever, I decided trying to interview my best friend, Jake Fassier. Now, Jake is a wonderful director to create a very first short Christian film called The Lives We Make. He will give you a special summary of what the poser, the origin of poser was all about and where and how it always began. Now I know some people may, may know this, it is 8 o'clock, it is Oscars night, I hope you enjoy your Jimmy Kimmel's corny ass jokes and that's why I come in. Because this is my time, this is prime time and it all starts right now on The Steven Factor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a show. This is a Oscar night primetime exclusive, and there's no Oscar relations here. But for the first time ever, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to interview in this man right here, Jake Fassier. I, I, am I correct? That's your last name. So it's it's Vrieslar. Vrieslar. Yeah, okay. Vrieslar. It's a really it's a hard name to say though. Vrieslar. Yeah. Vrieslar. Yeah. I was trying to practice that name on the Google search. Google messed me up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. J I could call you JV. Yeah, yeah just call me JV. That's fine. <laughs> Tell me about yourself and make sure you have to use your pronouns. Okay. My name is Jake Frieslar. My pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I am a director and director of photography. And uh, I recently directed a short film called The Lives We Make, which uh, will be premiering just before the Oscars night. So just before, well, by the time that this airs, it will already have premiered. Uh, and yeah, I'm a part of a director duo called Poser that was started with my, my best friend, Emmanuel, who lives in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we wrote and created this film together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, Jake, yeah. tell me the origin, what the Poser is, and how it would begin. Yeah. So I think, like, um, where Poser came from was Emmanuel and I, my friend, were making a lot of projects together. We made like passion projects together. We made commercial projects together. And we always kind of felt like we, um, we always kind of felt this like feeling of like imposter syndrome. Like, like we're like, oh, we feel like we don't know like enough about how to do this. Or we don't know as much of, as like these directors who are making these like really cool videos and stuff like that. And so we would always kind of just like joke that we're like, we feel like we're imposters or we're just, we feel like we're kind of making stuff up. But then the more that we would create, the more that I think we sort of realized that um, instead of that being a weakness, it could sort of be like a uh, kind of a space to be vulnerable and a, in, in a kind of a way, like kind of a superpower actually at the end of the day. And so we kind of just started owning this idea of like, you know what, what we're doing here is like we're, we're pretending, we're creating things, we're, we're kind of like trying to get back to this like sort of like childlike way of making stuff mm -hmm. and so we sort of embrace this i this identity of being a poser like we're just at the end of the day we're you know there's there might be fancy cameras and lots of money and lots of people and talented uh people around like creating this thing but at the end of the day we're just pretending or and we're making something for fun and something that's coming from a place of our imagination so like so yeah so it's kind of us kind of like reclaiming the the idea of being an imposter, mm. I guess, if that makes sense. What's the meaning of imposter in your mind? Yeah, so in, in my mind, imposter is someone who is acting like something that they're not. Mm. So, for example, like, me and Emmanuel don't have, like, a ton of directing experience, but um, being a, a director of the short film, we just, we kind of had to just dive right in and, and, and assume the position of a director in order to pull the film off. Mm. Yeah. So, do you love movies, Jake? I do love movies, but I don't watch enough. Movies. Yes, I know. I know you watch a lot of movies. Yeah, a lot. I watch a lot of movies when mm. I was a kid, from Home Alone to Toy Story, Classics. to Richie Rich to the original GI Joes, the anime series back in eighties. I love those. Yeah. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm. the live action ones with Jim Henson, were the badass. Yeah. But the new version of the Ninja Turtles when Zeke and I were hanging out since August, it was a classic. Yeah. That's totally. That's
that's that's why some movies are very interested. Yeah. But some movies were not interested. It's about the problem of the script, the yeah. problem of the imagination, or sometimes they're very rushed through things. Right, 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 right. And you know, it, it really upsets me, especially for the fans. Yeah. But even some people who are very nostalgic vibes, and they will might say like, it doesn't make any sense, or maybe just get out of here early, mm-hmm. or we need something more accurate, like documentary and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel that. Well, like super size and like Morgan Spurlock eat for McDonald's for thirty days and he's yeah. not feeling too well. Yeah. And I've been watching since high school though. Yeah. And I still have that on D V D. But yeah. It, it was great. Yeah. And I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And what year is the the posters was established? It was I mean, technically established um, last year, so in twenty twenty three. I thought it was back in nineteen ninety. Eight. No, so so our Instagram says established in nineteen ninety eight, but that's just when I was born. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's it's kind of it's a little bit of a joke, but <laughs> yeah. But also, I I feel like you need to tell you need to tell the audience that you were also a part. I don't know if you're getting here in the interview, but you were a part of this film as well. Yes, um, it's kind of a fun fact. I feel like. Yes, it is. It is a fun fact because um, I did the last episode on the behind the scenes. On Gosh, the, yeah. On so, so, so your fans already know. Yeah, yeah. The, the fans already know. It went like 30 views so far. Nice. But I will recycle it and do that again what really happened because, totally. you know, a long time ago, um, you know, three years since my grandmother passed, I wanted to do something more creative. I wanted to try yeah. to get something to be healed. Mm-hmm. I love school plays. I love being on the spotlight. But here's the thing. Nobody is perfect to become a spotlight. Yeah. It's all about you and your wonderful imagination. So I did a little stand up at an ice cream shop in Prospect Heights in Washington Avenue. Oh nice. At street performance and it didn't go so well because it was a low key vibe. Oh, uh, okay. But I thought it's gotta be a crowded audience. Yeah. And that really makes me a little disappointed. Okay. And that's one when I have a cold and a sore throat because I my feelings were completely messed up. Oh, okay. Then I did a little open mics, and now they doing like the let's effing go, right? Mm-hmm. They doing like four minutes, and four minutes is way too much time. Mm-hmm. So I stopped for that, but hopefully I'll get resurrected in the near future. Nice. But you came on July 4th during the barbecue. True. And you, I remember this moment. And you showed up yeah. and helped me to become as the next extra person. Yeah. And I said to myself, you know what, let's give it a try. Yeah. Originally, I supposed to do two extra shots, mm-hmm. but the problem was I gained like one eighty ish, and you feel me that part because I made that <laughs> clip a bit. I re- I remember I remember that I remember that part. Yeah, because my belly was so gained, I said to myself, "No, I need to trim down a little bit so I will I will become a perfect fit for the film." Yeah. So I went to Planet Fitness. Remember, I didn't show on day one. Right. On there day... was two shoot days. Yeah. And you and I remember I sent you the call sheet for for day yeah. one. Yeah. And you said, Hey, bro, I'm not gonna be there because I gotta go. I gotta go work out. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> and then so 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 what'd you do? You went you yeah, went to went... Go Planet Fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I went to um the the adult Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, me and Stephen call it the the adult Chuck E. Cheese because it has the same color scheme. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, but uh, you coined that term though. I just, I just, yeah. I can't see a plant fitness and not think that. Yeah, it's that. like <laughs> it's like an adult's playground, but the plant fitness will give you stress and everything. Totally. So I went to the elliptical bike, and that bay will give you more sweats, more stress. So on on shoot day one, you were just yeah, you I was were just in, on the elliptical. Yeah, and then I hang out with my friend from church in Manhattan. Okay. And uh, do a little bit of volunteering. And, and also we went to the concert down by Lincoln Center. So yeah. that's why I didn't show up. But a day later, I finally show up because I, I lose like, I went down like 183 to 177, I think. Oh, wow. So, which is great. But Crazy. this year, it went down like 167 to 166 nice. inch. So you can see the difference right here. Yeah. So Planet Fitness is a miracle worker. Yeah. So for the first time ever, um, went to Greenpoint. Yeah. It's, it's, it's right north side of the Billiesburg. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, or should I say Hipsterville, where all the Gen Zs and all the socialists over there, they totally. have their own freedom. Totally. 
Millennials are suck. I'm a millennial, so we're all suck. So anyways, <laughs> I hate become a millennial, man. So anyways, the church was so historic. And for the first time when I saw you and you told me I called, I become one of the first ones on the set. Yeah, dude. I always become the first. I don't know why. You're just, you're timely. It you know? is. You just get there on time. It is. Because you're, you're kind of a, you're kind of a producer's dream because everyone, usually everyone's late. You know, I know. They, they come after their call time, but you were you were, you got there right in time. Yeah, I know, yeah. man. I was supposed to call Uber, but I think the prices are mad expensive. Yeah, it's always hard to get to that part. Yeah, man. Yeah. How's life treating you, man? How do you feel about this impact, and how you feel about this movie inspired to all the Christian people? Yeah, I mean, I I feel I feel pretty nervous about it. Um, like my family's coming into the city to watch it. Get out. Yeah, they're traveling from Ohio. Mm. Um, I have some other friends. I have one friend coming in from Rhode Island to mm. see it. So it feels like it's gonna be a room packed with all these people who I really love and I like really kind of care about all of their opinions and stuff like that. So um, I, I, it's a little nerve wracking because I, I haven't like I haven't screened a film um, kind of since college. I don't think. Mm. Yeah, and even in college it was like. A little more laid back because they're like, oh, you know, they're just students or, you know, they're still learning how to make stuff. And now it's kind of like you kind of call yourself a filmmaker and so people assume that it's going to be good and you just have to hope that, yes. like, it, it is, is what they want, basically. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. And um, you dress as a little Harry Potter, to be honest. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's it's your one for dream. Yeah. We won't be when you grow up. Let's stop right there. Yeah. Um, pretend you're eight year old self. Okay. And and and, and your mom and dad will want to ask you, "We want to be when you mm. grow up." That's a good question. Yes, sir. Well, that was before I I started. I wanted to make movies when I was ten. Get out. So, but before then, I at eight I was I really liked to draw, mm -hmm. um, and. And just, I also just liked, because my, my dad did video stuff, mm -hmm. and he still does video stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so there was always kind of a camera around, and he had like a camcorder and stuff. But it, but also, um, I just, I knew that I liked, I knew that I liked technology. I knew that I liked drawing and, and making stuff. But I also just liked pretending and like, and using my imagination and like playing war with my brother or something. And just like, you know, like kind of just like, creating a character and like running with it. Yeah. So I think I think I at, at the time I probably thought I was going to be like a cartoon artist or something. Like I really love drawing Mickey Mouse in particular. So I, I think like I was like, oh, I'm probably going to be like a cartoonist um but more generally probably just an artist of some kind. So you was just like me, Jake. Is, did you used to draw as well? I used to draw and I want to be at the cartoonist, but as a grown man, being a cartoonist is hard. Mm. That's yeah. number one. True. But number two, yes, making imagination movies and graphics pretty easy for me. That's why I did. Nice. I made like a, a Green Ranger episode dedicated to Jason David Frank, and we've been texting about this. I don't know if you grew up with Power Rangers or not. Yeah. I My cousins like watch Power Rangers. Yes. Stuff. I don't watch that much, though. Yeah. But I, I know you really like Power Rangers. Yes. Yeah. I, and, and I bought a, a Green Ranger costume at nice. Amazon trying to dedicate it to the late Jason David Frank. Okay. And Jason David Frank was my idol. Mm -hmm. And he'd been, he been recently passed away, mm -hmm. um, um, risk his own life about his mental issues and everything. Mm -hmm. it, it hurts for people, for me, who have disabilities, like autism yeah. and everything. Yeah. But let's pray and people who have mental issues, including, um, you have a friend, and Dow, uh, um, Knight, Three, three. Am I correct? And um, have have so many issues, problems in this world, and mm -hmm. you know that's the most important thing. Yeah. You have a friend who always stuck inside you, mm -hmm. and even you're at home, and you've been in the middle of this toxic situation, like in rent issues, your family drama issues. Yeah. Two words. Go outside. Yeah. Hang out. Yeah. Catch up your friends. Mm -hmm. Follow up. Mm -hmm. See what's going on. Yeah. How's everything? Yeah. But don't even let your friends to let you down. Just yeah. be them from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what else that I might gonna ask you? Yes. I wanna ask you one last question. Mm-hmm. Are you sure when your when your movie will be have their own opinions? The audience will have their own opinions. Totally. Are you sure? There, there, there are two questions. Okay. Are you sure you're gonna hook me back on? That's number one. <laughs> and number two, are you gonna do a sequel? Oh, good question. Well, of course I'm gonna hook you back on and yeah. stuff. Yes. You know, you're gonna, you're, you'll definitely be in a future project yes. for sure. Cause not, cause I, I feel like I do need to give some context to your role in this. You originally is supposed to. We have this scene. I'm not gonna spoil it too much because I want people to kind of see it for the first time. We have this really crazy chaotic scene where there's a large group of people and they're all freaking out. And, um, and you are like one of the most attentive extras because I remember at one point, like we kind of just told the extras what to do and, and, and um, they were like, okay, yeah, well, we can do that. But I remember you came up to me at one point and you were just like, I think you asked me something like along the lines of like, what's my like motivation yes. right now? Like what's my motivation? Like you really cared about like the character uh, that you were playing specifically, even though typically people would be like, oh, extras, you know, they, they're, they're there to like support the main cast. Like you were kind of thinking, you're trying to kind of get into like a, kind of like a headspace of like an actor. You like a I mean? Robin Williams. Totally, like a Robin Williams situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, Robin Williams was the OG. Yeah. And I really loved him yeah. so much. Yeah. From Morgan Mindy from to Mrs. Style Fire, from Aladdin. Yeah. Uh, Robin was a comic genius. Mm, mm-hmm. And I was said to myself, I want to do something just like Robin. Yeah. Or I want to do something like the Jack and Gleason from The Honeymooners. Yeah. Or the Lucy Opal from I Love Lucy. Yeah. That's what I want to do it because do more creativity and more for imagination. But sometimes I don't like reading the script because I want to do it unscripted. Right. Because it's it's uh, it's way much even better. Yeah. But it is hard to do acting. Yeah. And also it's tough. being more creative. Yeah. So um, that feedback what you did, it was great, and yeah. I knew that I'm officially getting back on track. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's really good to hear. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And so, um, so that was I think that we'll definitely work again together. Um, I don't really think there's gonna be a sequel. We, me and Emmanuel had talked about um, this possibly being a sort of a snippet of a longer feature film Mm -hmm. so so i i would be open to maybe revisiting it down the line and telling a a longer film about the story of adrian and how she kind of got herself into this situation Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day i I think me and emmanuel feel feel pretty good about it being um kind of a standalone short film project but yeah i actually also had one question for you so as someone who grew up loving sort of these more, maybe more like fantastical fantasy action type movies and stuff like that, sure. how did you prepare for a role like like the one that you played in The Lives We Make, where it's like, this is a little more real world, you're kind of just playing like a normal guy, but then your background with film and with TV is like, it's like superheroes, it's, it's big characters, but then now you have to play this sort of like really specific, like kind of more normal, normal character. Like how do you, how did you prepare for that and how did you s- sort of act that out when you were in the scene? I always want to be a silent guy. And yeah. sometimes if I will say, look over there, is that person trying to steal your bank? Or look at Lex Luthor, he's trying to take over the world. Mm. That's how I had to do it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But I remember, and you know, movie is all about imagination. Mm-hmm. But when you're in reality, you're in a wrong place in a long time. But mm-hmm. the movie is actually based on reality, and reality is actually based on the movie. Mm-hmm. When you're in reality, you can see what's going to happen in the real world. If you're making a movie situation like this, yeah, you knew what's really happening to impact all of the people that you right. really love. Right. And people who are have so many memories of this time too. Yeah. And cherished it. Yeah. 
Gotcha. That, that's I always want to remember, and and sometimes I want to do it um, to to people who I really am because people know me for thirty five years now because yeah. I am a legend. And, yeah. And the reason why I said that because when my grandparents raised me as my second parents, mm-hmm. my grandparents always introduced all the grown folks people, and sometimes they live, sometimes they're gone, and I've been growing this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm a legend, and I really, really miss my grandparents a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think this movie helps me heal, mm-hmm. and it really made me better. Yeah. And JV, I just want to say thank you. Of course. You're the only, you're my best friend I ever had, oh, man. Thanks, for three bro. years relationship, man. Thanks, man. And I want to wish you all the best, and hopefully we'll see what happens next on this future project. We'll see what happens. Thanks, Steven. You're welcome, Jake. It was an honor. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. And listen, before you go, if you learn more about this channel, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to see all my latest videos and also the like button as well. For Jake, James, and myself, um, saying todo para la familia and thank you for watching in Steven Factor and stay tuned. The next video I really want to share with you is a review of the lights we make. So this is like a to be continued, but we're going to do it anyway. I want to give a special shout out to Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy, I know this is a, your third host. Please retire. <laughs> I still love you anyway, but you didn't get the Emmy, okay? <laughs> you, you're, 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 you're still the OG, but we love you anyway. But, but your jokes are okay, but I like... And I know you're a fan of David Letterman too, so you're the Brooklyn guy, and we love David Letterman as well. But here's the question. Is it okay we could have a black late night host someday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could be a late night host like the next Johnny Carson or Stephen Colbert, but we'll see what happens. One.